you have this mainstreamification of the radical alt-left. I'm confused by it. Yeah, these are, um, the alt-left is the militarized wing uh, of the Democratic Party. Now remember, the Democratic Party has had a militarized wing for a long time. In the 19th century, the militarized wing were the armed slave owners, the guys who actually would mobilize force to extract labor from people, to beat them up if they tried. They had runaway patrols. And by the way, this wasn't just private. They had, the state would, would equip slave patrols to chase runaway slaves down, catch them and bring them back to their owners. So, this, so slavery was a state-run institution to a degree. Later, the Democratic Party developed a militarized wing. It was called the Ku Klux Klan. And what is amazing is in the 1920s and early 30s, people who traveled between, say, Europe and America noticed that the black shirts and the brown shirts over here and the Klan, very similar. I mean, just look for a moment at the Nazi brown shirts and the KKK. They both have about the same number of members, two to three million. Both of them are majorly into costumes. They both target a racial minority. In the case of the Nazis, it's Jews. In the case of the Klan, it's blacks. And, and this is the crusher, each of these organizations is an extension of an actual political party. In the case of the brown shirts, the Nazi party. In the case of the Klan, the Democratic Party. And so, yet, this kind of information, which is obvious, I mean, there's, there's an actual, very clear, and almost stunningly lurid analogy, you won't find it in any textbook. It's never made because it's too awkward for somebody writing about this to draw these parallels out because people might get the idea that essentially you, that, that you've got these two militarized political parties and they're still with us. So Antifa, in a sense, is a logical outgrowth of these militaristic movements the Democratic Party has fielded from time to time. The only militaristic movement the Republican Party, by the way, has fielded is called the Union Armies in the Civil War. Right. Well, I, I see this, too, with, uh, with the radical right and the radical left. I, I think that the, the alt-left has a lot to do with the alt-right. And you, you had Richard Spencer on, uh, in your movie. And I'm thinking, you guys are both anti-Semitic, Antifa and, and Richard Spencer. You're both obsessed with identity politics and making everything about race. You're both atheists. And you both seem very pro-big government. You, seem, you both seem very socialist. I thought it was very telling in your film that Richard Spencer seems to embrace the Democrats. In many so ways. let's explain. I mean, here basically what you have is, what we're dealing with is this Charlottesville narrative. Now, not the tragedy of Charlottesville, because it was a tragedy, someone was killed. I'm talking about the ideological meaning of Charlottesville. And the ideological meaning for the left is that, hey, look, we might, we the Democrats, we might have been the party of slavery, of segregation, of Jim Crow, of racial terrorism, of the Ku Klux Klan. We may have been the guys that really opposed the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act and the Fair Housing Bill. And maybe the parties really didn't switch sides. Maybe we kind of got that all. That, that's a big lie. But today, the racists, the white supremacists, the KKK guys, they're all Trump supporters right over there. Look at Charlottesville. Now, in reality, the left hasn't done any homework here, right? I mean, they've never produced an empirical survey. They've never done a scholarly study. They've never produced any real evidence that Klansmen and neo-Nazis voted for Trump. They don't have that. What they have is images from Charlottesville of a handful of guys in Trump hats. And that's their proof right over here. Now, what I say is this proof is fake.